You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. I invite you to join us every Thursday at 7 p.m. for His Abounding Grace with Minister Vanessa Reed. On Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries of Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Reverend Pat Randall for declaring the finished work. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday night at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sunday at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. The first Monday of every month, Apostle Shirley Jones is here for Lifeline at 7 p.m. Every fourth Saturday of the month, Alabaster Box at 7 p.m. with Prophetess Carla Johnson. For more information, go to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com, and visit our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio, and like us. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to another broadcast of When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Today's broadcast is Friday Night Joy. Yay! I got, oh man, I got all kinds of things going on around me. I got great guests um, today. Of course, um, I have uh, Brother Anthony Wilson um, and Reverend Curtis Austin. Amen. They're with uh, Fresh, a, a, a nonprofit organization uh, called Fresh. Fully restoring every son's hope. It, it may, and they have been featured today on Friday Night Joy. We are excited, man, about what God is doing. We also have with me that's going to help me through all this to make sure I don't make any mistakes or say anything dumb, y'all. <laughs> it's Reverend Pat Randall. <laughs> so, Reverend Pat and uh, Reverend Curtis, I want you guys to say hello. Amen. How y'all doing? Hello, everybody. Amen. Amen. So, hello. Hey, Reverend Pat, there she is. Amen. So, we are excited. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Do, man, um, I'm telling you right now, go call somebody, get connected, man. God's going to do some uh, uh, Reverend Curtis going to bring forth a word um, at the end and everything. I know God has given him the word for the people of God, but I'm excited about these what these young men are doing, man. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in uh, probably about a couple minutes. So we'll be right back. And then we're going to give it over to Pat. She's going to go ahead and do prayer, start it off in prayer, because y'all know we need prayer in this day and time that we live in. Amen. So here's one more thing, and we'll be right back, okay? Amen. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio. On Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, Speaker.com, and Live 365 with 24-7 Gospel Music. All of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646-478-0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests, doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. Amen, 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 amen. Again, I want to welcome you to the broadcast. This is... When Christian Speak Talk Radio, this is Friday Night Joy. We have um, um, several guests with us today. Uh, amen. And the, the organization that they're working for, they do. They, they are the director and assistant director. It's called Fresh. 
fully restoring every son's hope. Amen. Um, we have Reverend Curtis Austin, and it was, and we also have um, Brother Anthony Wilson. But before we get it do anything, we got to go to prayer. We ask Reverend Pat to come forth for that prayer. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We glorify your name this evening. We praise you. We come into your presence with worship and with thanksgiving. We honor you, Father. We adore you. We say we love you. We thank you for breath that you place in this body. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given us another day and that this is the day that you have made. And so we are choosing to rejoice and be glad in it. Even in the midst of a blizzard, we can worship and we can praise you and give thanks, Lord God. So we thank you for this evening. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being present with us. We know that it is your anointing that breaks every yoke. We thank you for your anointing being on the 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 guest this evening that you will lead and guide them to speak a word, Lord God, that will touch someone's heart, that they will be the listeners. They will be changed during this broadcast, that they will hear something that will receive them, that will encourage them, that will build them up and give them the courage to move forward, hallelujah, in this 2016. Yes. So we thank you. Have your way during this broadcast. And we're just careful always to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And it's in Christ Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory amen. Bless God. Amen. Bless God. Amen. Bless God. Bless God. Uh, again, the organization is called Fresh, fully restoring the every son's hope. Amen. And we are excited about having these two young men on and everything. What we're going to do right now, and um, Patrick is going to help me do, do this, but I want to start out. I did get an opportunity to read both your, bio, your bios, man, and I'm just excited about the history and the testimony. But I want uh, first we'll start off with Brother Anthony Wilson, amen, who, which is a, one of the directors of the uh, Fresh Fully Restored Area Center. You can just tell us a little bit about, about you, sir. Yes. Well, I'm Anthony Wilson, the director of Fresh. And Fresh Fresh came about seeing the young generation that is falling to, you know, uh, Satan's uh, plan to try to destroy, you know, what God has created. So I talked to a lot of young guys through the course of my meeting them, and a lot of them was without hope. And the spirit touched me one day and it was like fresh, something that's new, something that, that brings about, you know, what you need, you know, to, to help you overcome those things that, that you're going through in life. And so fresh came about that way. And we, our motto is from Romans 12 two, where it says not, to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And a lot of the guys and the young people that I talk to, they have a certain way of thinking. And until we can change the way that they think, then they're going to still feel like they don't have any hope and they're going to feel like they're lost. So with Fresh, that's what we're trying to bring to our generation of young men and young women to let them know that they, that there is hope. And so that's what Fresh does for the young the young generation that's out here. Amen. 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 Uh, yeah, I, I just, can I step in a second? Well, let me get to Reverend uh, Curtis first because I want to get him an opportunity. Well, I still want to stay on, on, I want to stay on Brother Wilson. I'm not done with him yet. <laughs> There's a little bit more. There's a little bit more I want because I've, I, you know, okay. I, read, I read his bio, Reverend Ray, and it's so okay. it's interesting because, <laughs> well, well, um, Pat, that's what I thought. Reverend Pat, that's what I thought he was going to talk about. I didn't know we can get directly, but but it's all good. But I wanted. I, to, I, I um... know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. That's why. That's why I said we can't move on. We can't okay. move all on. Right. We'll I just talk a little bit about your life, brother Anthony. Yeah. Okay. 
um, how you were wrongly convicted of murder, it says, in your bio, and that you actually spent 22 years in a prison in state Maryland. And while you were there, you studied law, and yes. you had the opportunity. So tell us a little bit about that experience. Well, the, the experience for those the, for those who know me through the system when I was coming through, I I never lost hope. And when I got into really my biblical studies, I, the story that sticks out to me that I'll say and I always tell everybody is Pastor Curtis knows this when we talk. I say I'm the Joseph story. And when I went through that process of trying to prove my innocence. A lot of things that I went through, it was for a reason. So I didn't look at it as something that I would be bitter about. I remember talking to the prosecutor in my case, and when she had gave gave me my, you know, sentence reduction, and she talked to me one day, she said, are you bitter? I said, I said no, I'm not bitter, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how I feel about the system by doing something about it to help others. So I I started helping guys with their cases. Uh, a lot of lawyers were saying that I knew the law, so I went to an organization that paid for me to go to Howard University. So I went to Howard and did a, a paralegal uh, certification course, which I completed and graduated from that. So I started my own paralegal consultant services called the Great Injustice Paralegal Consultant Services. So I can sort out with family members, lawyers, uh, different individuals who may be going through the same thing I I went through to try to get them to have an understanding about the system that we that we have in place now and how it's not right. So with that, I'm just basically just doing what, what I'm called to do. I'm not out here doing nothing, yes. I'm doing what I was called to do, so. Amen. Amen. And tell us about the uh your cleaning company. Are you still doing that? Yeah, the cleaning company the cleaning company actually came about as a it was like an accident actually. A friend of mine came to me, he was saying that he wanted to start a company with buffing floors. So I started the buffing in uh, named it Many Faces Buffing and Cleaning Services and what I ended up doing was was having an alliance with parole and probation for uh, PG County and started hiring returning citizens. So things work out the way that God wants them to work out. And I, sometimes you don't see the vision or you don't see the mission that is, is being placed before you until until it's there. And so when I, when I started getting calls from God saying, I need a job, I need a job, and I was like, okay, this is what it is for. So what I did was I just started hiring guys that was coming home, trying to get them. It was like a starting point for them. I was saying, this is where you can start at to get yourself planted back in society and then move on to your next mission. And so that's what I do now. I just hire guys who I hire individuals who are returning back home with my cleaning business. Amen. Amen. Okay, also, Reverend Ray. Okay. So you got me started down, Pat. Reverend Pat. <laughs> <laughs> That, um, looking, at, looking at your bio, um, I also see. Talk, talk to us about the five questions that you have there. Here. Yeah, the five questions is basically questions that it deals with what what we're going to do about this generation. You know, um, I, when I go talk to the state's attorneys, I always say, "Y'all wait till you see a young teenager come into your courtroom with a." a murder charge or a assault charge or a carjacking charge. I said, why we can't be proactive? So I said, I'm going to do my part. I'm not going to wait till something happens and say, oh, we should do something. No, I'm going to try to do what I can do now. So with those questions that I ask is basically what can we do to try to, you know, make these kids see what, they can do what they can become and have that hope that when we go to talk to kids, me and Pastor Curtis, when we go to talk to these different organizations with kids who may have been sent there by the courts or whatever they you know, their situation was, we always tell them, You are in a place now where you can become whatever you want to become. Mm-hmm. But if you allow the system 
to take your life away, meaning to put you behind bars in a cell, 10 by 8, then not saying you can't become anyone, but you're going to be haunted for that period of time. But right now, you don't have to go through that. If you just take what we're trying to give you, make that change, you can become whatever you want to become. And that's what we're trying to get out to these young these young men and women when we go to these organizations and talk to them. Amen. Again, everyone, you're listening to When Christian Speak Talk Radio. This is Friday Night Joy. We're talking to two young men. Uh, they have an organization called Fresh, Fully Restoring Every Son's Hope. The young men's verse you you, you, you finished hearing was um, Brother Anthony Wilson, the director. The next verse we're going to talk to right now is Reverend Kirk. Kir- Kir- Curtis Austin, who is the assistant director. First, I want to tell us a little bit about himself, amen, and then um, if you don't mind, you can talk a a little bit about Fresh from your perspective also, sir. Uh, Yeah, um, yeah, I'm I'm really excited about being on here tonight and uh, talking about uh, Fresh. You know, I just go into me first, and, uh, you know, I I grew up in Washington, D.C., and Moved to Maryland shortly after, and um, you know, got in some trouble in Maryland. I ended up in the Maryland uh, judicial system. Um, upon my incarceration, I was going in at 22 years old, and I had two lives: one without parole, plus 70 years. But at the beginning of that incarceration, God came to me and told me that He was going to deliver me. But He told me that He wanted me to focus on Him, and He told me not to do anything or work, do any work on my case. So I, I just focused strictly on Him, and God kept His promise. So uh, during that incarceration time, though, God had did a, one, a 180 in my life and turned it all the way around. And as he turned me around, he started giving me principles to live by, and he first gave me four Fs to live by. And the four Fs that he first gave me to live by was stay focused, faithful while moving forward until I finished my course. Now, I understood that my course didn't finish until I reached heaven, so I had a work to do, and I had to accomplish that work in each season of my life that I was there. So by the time um, God instantly thrust me into the ministry, and by 2004, I was already ordained as a pastor of the House of Worship Church. And actually, you know, during that time is when I met Anthony Wilson. And Anthony Wilson, I ended up being his pastor. And, uh, you know, you just, sometimes you don't never know how God will intertwine people's lives because he says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And God will order your paths into each other's lives just to fulfill a purpose. And you might not even know the full purpose when you meet each other. And I'll never forget one Sunday I was coming to the pulpit to preach. And uh, when I stepped up to the pulpit, I'd already had the word that I was going to preach for that day. And uh, Anthony had came, and he was sitting in the back. And I'll just never forget it. That as soon as I stepped to the pulpit, I didn't know who it was for or what it was for, but the Lord said, no, I don't want you to preach that. I want you to preach this. And I remember the word. The word was, the promise will be delivered. And uh, and that's this. And then he came up to me after service and told me that that word was for him. But I praise God because God is a God that keeps his promise. And as I continue to walk with God, he ended up leaving. I was there a little bit longer. And um, God basically, you know, he even, you know, started giving me more principles to live by. And he gave me four Ps to live by after that, which is purity equals power. Power unlocks potential, and potential leads you into your purpose. And, you know, he just modeled those four, those eight principles. God, I just started modeling my life after. And, you know, and that was my new beginning. Uh, shortly after that, you know, God kept his promise and, and delivered me from prison, and, I, and now I'm home, and, dealing, and we are now uh, co-laborers and yoke fellas in this mm-hmm. ministry because I, I, don't, I don't think about it as a nonprofit. I think about it as a ministry. And right. the reason why I think about Fresh as a ministry is because we are trying to snatch the youth out of the hand of the enemy because one thing yeah. about the enemy, he has always had a decree on our children whether it was with this generation, the generation before, but it's always been a decree on our children. We can see that in the book of Exodus when it came to Moses and the promise and the child that was to come and deliver the people. You know, it was a decree to kill the children then. We can see it in the times of Jesus. It was a decree to kill the children then, and that decree has never changed. And we see it even more prevalent right now in our community. But the problem is that our community now is now ostracizing our youth and not teaching them that they truly have value in work because they judge them by the way they dress, they judge them by the things they see, and they don't remember that at one time we all did some things that was contrary to those that were over top of us, like parents and administrators and those that loved us or cared for us. But yet at the same time, in the old days, they didn't cast you off as quickly as people cast our children off now. So our objective is, is to really be fully restoring every son's hope, 
showing them who they are, teaching them where they can go, and letting them know that the possibilities are limitless when it comes to Christ. Amen. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I said, uh, Pat, give me one minute, okay, and then I'll pass it over to you. But I'm looking at your, the uh, the, pro, the pro, promo that we have, and one of the things that I like about what you guys are doing is number one, your mission is to have safe, productive communities where models of manhood are per- perpetuated daily. And uh, I want to commend both of you, brothers, for doing the ministry that God has called you to do. And one of the things I have said, said earlier as I begin to read over this is that sometimes in life we don't always know why we go through things, you know, but when God brings us through is to reach out to somebody else, and that's what you're doing um, um, in the in the community. And even now, the people that you don't even know or have met or just happen to be listening, because somebody is going through something similar right right now or going through a situation and don't know what to do next. Um, I do have other questions, but I'm going to wait, and I'm going to turn it over to Pat. Maybe she wants to talk about some different things, other things. Amen, amen, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I just want to take a minute and uh, just do um, just a couple of announcements about some upcoming things before we go back Mm -hmm. um, to um, Fresh. And um, we've got um, on actually coming up on Monday, the 25th, um, Sister Veronica Alston is going to be on um, Wings of the Spirit broadcast on this coming Monday, the 25th at 7 p.m. She's the founder and the director of Ruth Miracle Group Home. And basically, she's dealing with women, women that have been incarcerated, women that have been in, in uh battered homes and um, homelessness and uh, drug ex- Drug addiction, uh, drug addiction. Uh, praise God. So she has a um, uh, just an amazing testimony. So you definitely want to uh, join us for that particular broadcast. And then in February, we've got Pastor Mike and Evangelist Sabrina Smith coming in, and they're going to be talking about relationships. Praise God. And that's going to be Monday, February the eighth at. 7 p.m. And then we have a friend, a dear beloved friend of When Christian Speak Talk Radio, Prophet LaMonica is returning, praise God, and she's always a blessing. And she'll be here with Reverend Ray at on Friday Night Joy, uh, February 19th at 7 p.m. So you don't want to miss that pro- broadcast. She always has a dynamic word for the people of God. And I'm really, really, really excited about a new show that will be added to uh, When Christians Speak Talk Radio, and it is called Adoration, and the host is evangelist, missionary, psalmist, songwriter, Louis McElwain, glory to God. And the the kickoff of this uh, program will be the third Monday in February, which is the 15th, and it will uh, continue to air every third Monday at 7 p.m., so don't miss that first broadcast, um, February the the 15th, glory to God. In fact, he's inviting me to be a guest on the show, so I don't know what he's going to do to me, uh, (laughs) but glory to God, I I agreed to come on. Praise God. (laughs) <laughs> so there are a lot of things that are in the air, and also um, be on the lookout. We're, you know, we're working on our our website is in reconstruction mode. Uh, there are some temporary things out there at our website, but we are really trying to update it and just bring some exciting things and um, be able to offer you uh, different things of interest on that website and links that will take you to places of interest as well and ways of listening to the podcast and just all kinds of exciting little things. So be on the lookout for, for that as well. And please, um, you know, we are a 5013C uh, nonprofit as well. So we got a donation page out there, and you can uh, do donations through PayPal. Glory to God. Amen. All right, back to you, Reverend Ray. Amen. 
Amen. Again, everyone, you're listening to When Christmas Speak Talk Radio. I'm your host, Reverend Ray. I'm joined by Reverend Pat today. This is Friday Night Joy. I have two young men on with us today. Um, uh, give us a say Reverend Bra- Brother Brother Anthony Wilson, Brother Anthony Wilson, and uh, Brother Side. That's right, Brother <laughs> 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 Brother, when I think about it, dude, you're doing ministry, man. So hey, you ain't nothing but a tighter, man. So God calls us all to do to go forward. So <laughs> I'm not that far. That's right. We're all ministers. <laughs> so and we also have Reverend Curtis Austin with us, amen. And um, they do a ministry, I mean, called Fresh, which is fully restoring every son's hope. Amen. And I'm excited again about having them on, on Friday Night Joy and having them on with Christian Speak Talk Radio. I mean, um, as I begin to read over your bio and go back and look at some of the things that you said, one of the questions I want to ask, and either one of you guys can answer, or, or, bit, or both, what, what, would take, what, what would you do if there's a young man right now that maybe just got out of prison being wrongly accused? What was some of the advice that you would give them? And uh, uh, just to start with that, what kind of kind of advice would you give them? Uh, you want me? Yeah, you can go first, and I go after you. Well, the the one thing I learned, and the one thing I learned in, in life and dealing with my situation is always listen. Mm-hmm. You know, because you you don't know what someone is going through or what they may need if you're not attentive to to what they what they're saying. So with me, I listen to the person, and then I seek to, to find ways to to assist them in that area. So that's what I do. I just listen, and then I then I do the assist. Okay. And and for me, I you know I, it's definitely important to listen. But Anthony said something uh you know that was really prevalent and and with it, to his situation as well when the prosecutor asked him was he better. And uh, one of the things that I I would give a young man or a young woman the advice right. is is uh, uh don't be bitter, be better, mm-hmm. you know. And, and it's important to not allow you know the experiences of our life to cause us to become bitter and cause us to go in the wrong direction even worse. Because see, the thing about it is, once you experience something like that and then you come out of it, then you have something on you where you feel like you know that it was it, it is a it isn't just but at the same time, you know, you need to take that. You need to use that to propel you to a greater level, you know, a greater level of where you are right now because those things that set you back just might be a setup for a great comeback. And you can see that by the prime example of me and Anthony as what we do today, that those things in our life were just a setback. And now that we are past that setback, God has set us up for a great comeback but at the same time, we're using this comeback to help other people step up even greater. So I would just encourage the person to just don't get bitter, but get better and use it to propel you even higher. Amen. All right. Another, another question I have for you, and I, I think Reverend Pat may have something too. Another question I have for you, what would you, what would you say to how could a state or the local um, government or courts uh and you may or may not have, but I'm just looking for anything. Uh, what can if there, someone's listening? That's the prosecutor. What kind of advice would you give them on how the system could be better? And that's a very broad question, but whatever you give me, I, I'll take. Amen. Um, you don't, you don't one first. Uh, I'll say this. I'll go on this one. <laughs> the system for the system to be better. <laughs> it's basically this. It's, it's real simple, for real. You know, you know, if you're going to enforce the law, you got to also abide by the law. Plain and simple. Okay. 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 Yeah, with me, I got a website. Okay. On my website, I wrote a paper. When I was in, I, um, I uh, went to college, Cotton State, and I wrote a term paper in 2000 called the injustices within the judicial system. So when I when I started my business, I put that term paper on my website and the professor her name was Deborah Dean and she when when she gave me my paper she put an A minus and she put interesting and she said, Why are you writing about this? I said, Because I'm living it. So if anybody wants to know about how I feel about it, go to my website, the great dot com and you can see it, it is a term paper. 
and and I got my turn paper on the end that it talks about the system and what should be done to better the system. Amen. Amen. Uh, Reverend Pettit, you have anything? Yeah, I I was looking at the uh, the listing of your um, the types of workshops that you um, do. You want to uh, share a little bit about those workshops that you do? Um, yeah, we we actually had a meeting with uh with a few organizations trying to uh, form an alliance with different organizations so we can be more effective in the community. So we had a meeting up the state's attorney's office. What was the past Thursday? Was it last week or the week before? Last last Thursday. Last Thursday. Last Thursday. Yeah, we had a, it was very it was very very productive. Uh, we definitely enjoyed the meeting because a lot of us had an opportunity to 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 discuss it and, and and exchange ideas with with the workshops that we're trying to do is is it's world is is worldwide because we're trying to get these workshops in that deals with conflict resolution, mm-hmm. anger management, um alternative to to violence, gender identification, the bullying issue and we're trying to get it actually in the school system. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people know back, you know, when we was going to school, they may have had something like field day or spirit week or whatever it was. But we're trying to get a particular uh, a week where we can come into the schools and do these programs for these young men and women to show them that there's an alternative to fighting, to to cussing out your teachers, to right. having issues, you know, in your home. And that's what we're trying to do with the workshops that you see on on our uh, ministry. Amen. 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 Praise God. Right. Listening to you, I especially with the things that are going on with the youth today in the school system, where there's more or less, I don't want to say gang fighting, but group fighting. Amen. Um, I think the workshop or what you have, uh, have, have, have put it together be uh, would be effective because we need to get we need to be able to do those like those, those kind of things. So my prayer is going to be with with both of you and the organization and the ministry for what God has called you to do in that position. So, um, okay, we have some we all have some problems with uh, somebody's audio <laughs> and everything. Uh, I don't know why, but I'm just Are asking. You who, yeah, you hear but, some um, background noise? Yeah. So, but anyway, we're gonna go forth, and and this is what we're gonna do in the name of Christ Jesus. We got, <laughs> we we taking care Amen. of all that. Amen. And we're gonna move forward. Thank you, Lord. Um, um, again, everyone, you're listening when Christian Speak Talk Radio. This is Friday Night Joe. I'm your host, Reverend Ray. Amen. We're talking um, to two anointed young men that God is, uh, has planted a great seed into, um, Brother Anthony Wilson. See, I almost said Reverend Anthony Wilson again, man. I'm going I'm to I'm keep saying that. <laughs> and uh, Reverend <laughs> Curtis, Curtis Austin, amen, uh, who are uh, in charge of the director and assistant director of Fresh, Fully Restoring Every Son's Hope, amen. Uh, the mission statement, again, is to have safe, productive communities where positive models of manhood are perpetuated perpetuated daily. It says that the FRESH program is built upon the foundation, and I like this, of love and faith, a love for returning citizens who we represent and a youth who we have to translate, um, transition from adolescence to man- manhood. Um, one of the questions I have, and Reverend Pat, you let me know uh, if you got something else too, is that mm-hmm. if there's someone that wants to get in contact with you, how would they be able to get in contact with you? Is there a telephone number? Um, uh, email or something like that you want to give out? Yeah. Um, the email is fully restoring every son's hope 2013 at yahoo.com. We have flies that's, that's posted around different areas of PG County. Okay. And we have our cards and and we usually we we usually go out. We have a field director, Mr. James per, Person, okay. very effective, very effective uh, a gentleman. 
Uh, he did 39. Maybe make, Let me make sure I get it right because he always makes sure he tells oh, us to the yeah. kids. He, he did <laughs> three, six months out. Only, six six months months out. Months out. <laughs> he said, I did 39 years and six months. <laughs> and he, and uh, he, yeah, he's very effective. And so he, he goes around and meet up with different organizers, different recreation centers to where we can go out and – and speak to the youth and and give them what what we've been through to maybe you know bring about some positive changes in their lives. So so mm-hmm. that's what we do. We 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 basically it's it's like our, our, our feet are to the ground. So we go out. We like I told you when I told the prosecutor, we we're not sitting there waiting. We going out there to to to, to make that effective change in their lives. We're not waiting for them to do something. We want to help them out prior to that. So. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, amen. Amen. I, I just got a uh, a message that they want you to repeat the email again, and uh, please. Okay, it's fully restoring every son's hope. Two thousand thirteen at yahoo dot com. Amen. And we're gonna. We're gonna add that also to um, our Facebook page pad, okay? And if you can put that yeah. in the chat room, um, if there's anyone there, Amen. Um, you know what, man? I'm listening to what you guys are doing. I'm, I'm extremely excited about the ministry and the lives that's gonna be determined. And one of the things that you mentioned, as far as the workshop, that you wanted to be more so than. Um, um, just the local area. For those that don't know, we're we're broadcast live in the Washington D.C. area, and I think and I'm, my prayer for you that it would extend beyond those those boundaries. In fact, it'd be no boundaries whatsoever. And um, because there's, there's a uh, there the 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 all of the United States need to hear, and probably some overseas places too, um, need to hear this kind of message that God has given you. Amen. 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 Yeah, Reverend uh, Pat. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, well, actually, um, what I want to do is read um, underneath this um, mission statement in this little packet that you gave me. I, I wanted to read that, restoring love and hope to our community. And I just wanted to read what, what's written. I think it, it's beautiful. It says, the absence of love has hindered a man's successful transition from prison or youth facility to freedom. Love that is not merely a noun, but love that is demonstrated by action. Our program, Love, will be demonstrated every minute, every hour, every day. As men who have been delivered from a sentence of life imprisonment and 36 years respectively, we cherish this opportunity to help others remain non-recidivist and become exemplary husbands, fathers, sons, mentors, and citizens, men who will help make our communities safe havens of hope and prosperity rather than remnants of hopelessness and despair. The FRESH program will build upon the foundation of love and faith, a love for the returning citizens who we represent and the youth who we desperately want to help transition from adolescence to manhood, an abiding faith that by working in partnership with family, community, and God, we can help address the myriad difficulties that are prevalent in our community. The returning citizens are men who have recently been released from imprisonment, bondage to a system of anger, despair, and violence and who have demonstrated that they have changed their behavior patterns that resulted in imprisonment, and they are now assisting our endeavor to bring the neighbor back to the hood. Returning citizens are also those young men and women who are incarcerated in the juvenile justice system. Amen. Amen. Well said. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 So um, we're going to, you know, Reverend um, Curtis is going to bring us uh, a word, but um, 
before he does that, uh, Brother Anthony, is there um, uh, a final word that you would like to um, say to listeners? There may be some people who are listening right now who uh, just need to be encouraged. Uh, They um, may have come out of the uh, prison system or there may be uh, some parents listening who are dealing with juveniles who are just misbehaving and they just feel, they feel hopeless as parents about uh, what to do uh, with these, with their young people. Is there something you would, a word of hope and encouragement you'd like to say? Yes. When, when I deal with a lot of young men that I, that I mentored to, the one thing I found was that they just wanted a, a listening ear. They wanted somebody that would understand them. And when I encounter young men who I just meet and they are able to open up to me, someone who they just met about intimate parts of their lives, it really affects me because I look at them and say, why you can't talk to your mother or your father who raised you, who's supposed to be the person who you can go to for all things, but you're telling a stranger who you just met all these things. And so I tell, I say that to, to, to get this message through to the parents. I tell stories like this. I'm going to give you this so you understand. I had a young man call me one night crying about his father. So instead of telling him what to do, I gave him a story about me and my father. And after the story, he laughed and was like, man, thank you. I appreciate that. So you have to relate to the individual in order for them to open up to you. Parents understand that they they want to raise their children to be a particular way, want them to be successful. But if parents don't get the understanding that you have to have your child be, be open and trust, trusting you where they can come to you about things, they're going to go out there to the gang members. They're going to go out there to the streets where people are going to listen to what they're saying, and then it's going to be too late. So I tell every parent that's listening to us tonight, have that relationship with your child where they don't have an issue with coming to you about anything. And that's how I got it even with my daughter, yes. Even with my daughter, she talks to me about everything. And that's and that's the message I get out tonight. Always be open so your children can always come to you and not the streets. Amen. Amen. And, uh, okay. and just just to just to kind of pivot off what he said and, and it's important too because, you know, and I think the one way to become open, like a parent might be asking, Well, how do I how do I even begin? You know, and um the one way is that, that you can become open and, and even you know, begin to have that, that, that line of communication is remember when you were there. Mm-hmm. Don't forget mm-hmm. when you were there, when you were that age. Remember how you felt. Remember how you might have wanted to even be approached. You know, um, you know, a lot of times and, and we, we say that, you know, that's my kid. I pay, I feed them, I clothe them. They're going to do what I say or, or, you know, or get out or whatever. But at the same time, you know, and, that's, and, and parents do deserve to be respected. But also, too, remember that your children, also deserve respect as well. So how you communicate is going to determine what you get back. So just remember where you were at at that time and how you wanted somebody to talk to you and approach you about things. And then maybe if you would take that approach, you'll see a different cha- a change in the communication. Amen. 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 Bless God. What we're going to do real, now, real quick, Brad, we're going to take a quick break. Amen. And then we're going to come back and uh, we're going to hear a word from Reverend Curtis. Um, Austin, we're excited about what, what God has been doing in your young men's life. Um, Brother Anthony, I want to thank you in, in advance um, for the anointing that God has placed in your life, man. Um, and um, God, is, God, is, God has brought you a long way, man, and he's not finished with you yet. You know, um, he's doing some things with you. He's, he's allowing you to reach a group of people that others can, may not be able to reach. And I thank God for you and uh, Reverend Curtis, man. I do from the bottom of my heart. 
and everything. So we're going to, unless, Pat, you have something else, we can go ahead and um, play a song by um, Brother yeah. Doc Pearson. Yeah, all right. Uh, the song is called The Lord's Been Good to Me. We're not going to play all of it. Probably play about a minute. Amen. But I want to let everybody know you've been listening to When Christian Speak Talk Radio. This is Friday Night Joe. I'm your host, Reverend Ray. I'm joined by Reverend Pat Randall. And we're talking to a Two young men that that are anointed that are doing a ministry called Fresh, fully restoring every son's hope, and that is Brother Anthony Wilson, the the, the director, and Reverend Curtis Austin, the assistant director. Fresh, Amen. So let's go ahead and play the song. We'll be back in a minute. Amen. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. In perfect peace And I can do all things Through Christ that strengthens me So great has been thy faithfulness Coming in and going out I'm blessed And with my heart I believe in true righteousness And now I'm so glad he did I always want to play, play a little bit longer, amen, <laughs> to the Lord <laughs> being good to me, man. That's a testament. What we're going to do, Pat, at the end, we'll play it completely. That's Reverend, uh, that's Brother Doc Pearson, amen. Again, everyone, you're listening to When Chris and Speak Talk Radio. I'm your host, Reverend Ray, joined by Reverend Pat. This is Fre- Friday Night Joy, fresh, fully restoring every son's hope uh, uh, organization, our ministry, amen, our theme, our promise, amen, started by Brother Anthony Wilson and as Director Reverend Curtis Austin, um, um, Assistant Director. And there was another young man, I don't leave him out, that you mentioned. Uh, what, what was the other young man's name? James Person. James Person, yeah. James, James Person. Person. I feel He's like a coordinator. That, okay. So we want to send a shout-out to him. Amen. And to all of those that are part of this ministry, I want to encourage you uh, wherever you are to support this ministry. This is about the, the men. Everybody's always crying about the men. So I, he, he has some brothers that's doing some action, taking action um, concerning the men. Amen. So what we're going to do right, right now, we're going to turn everything over to Reverend Curtis. Amen. Reverend Curtis, you got the mic, man, and whatever, you, um, let God use you whatever way that he sees fit. Amen. Reverend Curtis. Amen. 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 I praise God for that. Uh, you know, I just want to talk tonight to, to people out there that's looking for great change. And I want to let you know that first and foremost that great change always starts in the heart of the, every individual. It must start at the individual first. But then you might be saying to yourself, well, how can I change? Because, you know, you've been through so many things, you've experienced so many things, and you might think that change is not in your cause. But I want you to know today that the Scripture declares in First Corinthians chapter 26, it says, For you see your calling, brother, how that not many wise men out of the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen, yeah, and things which are not to bring the naught the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. See, one thing about it is that God hasn't called many wise and many noble or many mighty individuals into this call. God has called those that the society has ostracized, the people that God says, oh, they turned the blind eye to you and not noticed you or your purpose, but I've noticed you. And that's what God is saying to you tonight, that I have a call on your life. It doesn't matter what you've been in. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what you're in right now. But what matters is that God is calling you. He's calling you out of darkness into his marvelous sight because God desires to bring great change in your life. Because, see, one thing about it is that when God changes something that nobody thought could be changed, then that's when he gets the glory. There was a story in the Bible, uh, excuse me, there was a story about a man, a wise master builder one time. And this wise master builder, he, had, he desired to make a sculpture of his son. 
So what he did was he went to the quarry and he went out and he asked for a certain amount of rocks. He said, I want, I need this, the, the rocks to make it, this statue. So the the, the, the quarry uh, owner, he said, well, I got the best limestone. I got the best this. I got the best that. He, the, the man said, the man said, no, I don't need that. He said, well, why don't you need that? He said, no, I want your weather torn, your broken, and your discarded rocks. He said, well, why would you want that if you want to make a statue into the image of your son? He says, well, let me ask you this. He says, I'm already famous. And because I'm already famous, what glory shall I get if I make it from good limestone? But how much more glory shall I get if I make it from something that nobody wants to use? And that's what God is saying tonight, that he want to use something that people don't think can be used. He want to change things that people think can't be changed. He want to raise, he want to raise up what people think can't be raised up, and it starts with us. Because the first thing he wants to do is he wants to change your place. He wants to change your position and where you are right now, even how you view yourself. Because the Bible declares in uh Second Samuel chapter 9, it was a man by the name of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was lame in his feet. And Mephibosheth was a, a man that he was out, he was actually on the run, well, not on the run, but he was outside of the community of the believers because his, king, his father was a king and was killed at one time. But yet at this time, once David had become king, he called for Mephibosheth because of the very relationship that he had with Mephibosheth's father, who was Jonathan. So he called Mephibosheth back because he wanted to show honor to Jonathan by showing it on his son. So once Mephibosheth came back, the ship itself was lame in his feet, and he didn't know, you know, why the king was calling him. But at the same time, he was in a place called a Lodabar. And Lodabar means a place of barrenness or shame. So, therefore, now he's in this place of barrenness, and, 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 and he's called back to the kingdom. And, Mel, and the ship itself's name also means destroyer of shame. And God wants to also change your name. He doesn't just want to change your position, but the king brought Mephibosheth and set him at the table and gave him everything that belonged to a king's son. So one thing that God wants to do is he wants to get you back to the place where you belong, and that's at the table of God. Because once you get to the table of God, then you can start seeing and understanding who you really are in him. So therefore, your name is not shame. It means that your name is the destroyer of shame. God wants to raise you up to destroy the shame that's in your past, raise you up to destroy the shame in your community, raise you up to change things that people think cannot be changed because we're talking about tonight, great change. Because after he changes your position, he also will change your name. And when he changes your name, he's going to give you a new name that other people never knew that you already had. Because God has placed a label upon you that you haven't even understand or realized yet. Because so many people in your life might have told you that you'll never amount to anything, that you're just like your father, that you'll never be in anything, that you'll end up in prison or dead or in the graveyard. But I want you to know that the label is not the one that you need to keep. The label of alcoholism, the label of murder, the label of drugs, the label, uh, none of those labels belong to you. But the label that belongs to you is that you are a child of God. So because of that very fact, there was a man by the name of Jacob, and Jacob wrestled with the angel in the middle of the night because his name means the final or trickster. And he wrestled with him, and he said, I won't let you go until you bless me. But God is saying, no, I need you to let go of the things that you hold on that's keeping you from being who I called you to be, that I'm bringing change in your life because I haven't called somebody that other people say is on a pedestal. I call somebody that's in the dark places right now. I'm calling you out into a place where you can help lead somebody else out. I'm helping you get into a place, a position where you know that you have a place at my table, you have a brand new name, and can nobody take that from you. He's saying, I won't let you go until you're blessed. But God's saying, don't let go of me, but let go of the things that hold you from being close to me. Because the closer you get to me, the more you'll be able to see what I'm able to do through you and for you and use you to do as a community. So it's time for me to let me, to let me change your name. We're talking about great change tonight. Because after he changes not just who you are, and he changes your place of residence, because he brings you into a kingdom where you have resources that are unlimited. And then he changes your name and calls you a son. The scripture says in 1 John 3, 1, it says, What man of love is this that the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God? He's calling you out because he wants to make you a son. He wants to make you a daughter. He wants to make you new. And the next thing he would change, he would change your clothes. He would change the very things that you wear. Because, see, a lot of us have been through so much that what we wear defines who we are. But the clothes that God wants to give us is the clothes of Jesus Christ's righteousness. He wants us to take off the robe of shame. He wants to give us the beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Change what you even appear to be in the eyes of other people. 
See, there was a man by the name of Joshua in Zechariah chapter 3 during the time of the rebuilding and returning of the captives back into their homeland. And now this man is standing before the Lord, the judge, and Satan is at his right hand to accuse him. All your life you might have been accused by the enemy to say that you're this or say that you're that. But God was right there now, and he's saying, I rebuke the enemy for your sake, and I'm giving you a brand new name. I'm giving you a brand new position. I'm giving you brand new clothes. I'm changing who you are and setting you in my court that you may judge and that you may be by my people. Now that you know this, now that you understand this, now that you have seen the things that God is calling you to, you know that he's pulling on your heart. You know that he's tugging on you right now. You know that he's been speaking to you in your quiet time. You know when tears been running down your eyes and nobody else knows it. You know the times when you've been cried out to God and ain't nobody else hear you but God. You know the times when you felt like you wanted to give up but you couldn't give up because something was holding on to you, and that was God. And right now I'm telling you that God wants to bring great change in your life. I don't know who you are right now. I don't know who I'm speaking to. But I want you to know it doesn't matter where you've been, where you are, what you're going through. It's about what God wants to take you to. He wants to change your position. He wants to change your name. He wants to change the way you look, and he wants to bring you home into his house. And I'll finish with this one little story, and this story is this. It was about a young girl who was lost in the city, and there's a lot of youth right now that's lost in our city. It's a lot of adults right now that's still lost in their adulthood because they still don't know their identity, and they're trying to find their way home. Well, she woke up to an officer and said, can you help me get home? The officer begins to tell her and ask her all these type of questions, where you belong and where is this and this and that, but she cuts the officer off. And when she cuts the officer off, she says, this show me to the church and I can find my way home, find a church home. And I guarantee you, if they preach in Jesus Christ, you'll find your way home. God bless you because he wants to bring great change in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless God for that word. Amen. Bless God. Amen. Thank you. Thank Amen. you so much, Reverend Curtis. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, Reverend Pat, what I want to do now is um, I want to say a prayer for Fresh, okay, and the young men that are working and the people that are assisting. I feel led to do that. Amen. Um, and um, amen. I'm getting messages that says hallelujah. Amen. And when people are responding um not only to the um to the to what you guys are doing, but they're also responding to the word. Amen. Um so what we're gonna do real quick, we're gonna say a prayer. Amen. And um in fact let's do this right now. Okay. Um Father God, we come right now thanking you, God, for every single thing that you have done in these young men's life, God. The good and the bad, because through the bad, God, you have turned it around for their favor, for their good, so that they may begin to reach out to to those that may have given up on hope. They may begin to reach out for God, that those that don't know what else to do next, God, they might begin to reach out to parents, to to elected officials that may not have had an opportunity to really know what's going on. So we thank you for the ministry, God, that you have given these these young men. We thank you for the testimony and everything. Now, God, we pray for increase. We pray for increase not only in the community, God, that this particular ministry will go forth in, into all the states, God. We pray, God, that someone somewhere will be willing to give a helping hand, whether it's through finances, whether it's through just coming in and then um, a help, whatever the case might be. We pray, God, for favor with the government officials, God, um, the elected officials, God, to make this happen, God. We pray, God, that you would take them right now, God, and begin and begin to, to completely order everything there is about these young men and others that are assisting them, God. We thank you in advance that you are doing a new thing in the earth, God. We thank you in advance that you are doing a new thing with them. Now, Father. You know their private prayers. You know their private concerns. You know their ups and their downs, their tears and their frowns. You know the situation more so than anything. So we pray that you will begin to bring forth a peace that past all understanding. We pray, God, that you will begin to show them, God, your glory. That you have called them, God. Yes, Reverend Anthony, yeah, I'm saying that, for such a time as this, God. 
that you have called, Reverend Curtis, God. You have called those that are working in this venue because of a ministry that needs to take place, God, to restore brokenness, to restore hope, to restore uh, those that are returning back into uh, the system, turning back into the world, God, turning back into their families, God. We pray for this ministry that will touch not only those, God, but it begin to um, touch those that are young, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the vision that you have given given them, God. We thank you for the vision and the purpose you have given them, God. Allow them not to be weary in well-doing. Let them know that they are going, doing a great work. Let them know that the favor of you, God, remind them in the midnight hours is upon them. Remind them, Lord Jesus, that you promise never to leave them nor forsake them. God, thank you in advance for the move of your spirit upon their lives. Thank you in advance, God, for the favor, God, for being able to go in front of governments and governors and presidents and whoever that is, and to be able to say, this is the change that needs to take place. Thank you in advance, God, for the word that would go forth, God, from out of their belly that you put there, God, to reach out to, those, to, to many. We thank you in the best. In Christ Jesus' name we pray, amen, and amen, and amen, amen. 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 Reverend, Reverend Pat. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, I just want to thank you, brothers, for um, coming on the air, uh, for sharing your heart, for being transparent, uh, in your testimony, and I know that uh, the words that were spoken this evening will go forth as God has sent them to accomplish the very thing that the Lord wants to accomplish through this broadcast. And I just, I just want to just praise God this evening and just speak a blessing over the fresh ministry that in the days ahead, that doors that were previously closed will begin to open, and God will give you outstanding favor with man, You for you already have favor with him, but he will cause you to have outstanding favor with man. Glory to God. He will draw those to you who are like-minded and have a vision that God has placed in them that connects to what you are doing. So I thank God. I thank God. I thank him that he's going to bless you in your personal lives, that he's going to reach even those in your family that, that you've been praying about who appear to be unreachable but they are not unreachable to God, and God will honor. He will honor your prayers. He will honor your life of service to him. He will honor your heart to reach out to his people. And we give thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. Thanks. Amen. Amen. Well, young man, thanks again for coming on the uh, with Christian speech. Uh, you know you got to come back, man. This can't be a one-time deal. Amen. <laughs> Brother Thank Anthony you and Reverend Curtis, yeah, and everything. Uh, what we're going to do, uh, uh, Brother Anthony, and I want to give you an opportunity for any last word, and then we're going to ask Reverend Curtis to close us out. Amen. Okay, I want to say thank you for definitely having us on your show tonight. And I hope that our message tonight touched the hearts of those who needed it. And we're just continuing our mission and whatever the Lord has in store for us. And with that, I'll let Pastor Curtis, uh, Reverend Curtis, take us out. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I want to thank uh, you, uh, Reverend Pat and Reverend Ray, for having us on as well. And uh, we definitely appreciate the opportunity, you know, to basically, you know, express, you know, our love and our passion for the youth and also the restoring uh, young men back into our society. Uh, you know, I'll pray out now. Yes. Yes. Okay, amen. 
Father God, we honor you and thank you, Lord God, for tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for what you have done and how you ordained this very time and season, Lord God. So we ask, Lord God, that what your purpose was, that it will be accomplished, Lord God. We also ask a blessing, Lord God, over when Christian radio talk, Lord God, over both the reverence, Lord God, that host us tonight, Lord God, that you would bless them in every way, fashion, and form, Father. I pray that you continue to have your way, leave nothing untouched or nothing undone, Father. We know that you are able to do all things for your word. Said, Behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? There's nothing too hard for you. So we say thank you, Lord God. We lay it in your hands, Lord God. We declare everything that has been done here, Lord God, has been sealed by your Holy Spirit and by your blood, Father. So we just praise you and honor you, Lord God, knowing that you have got the glory and that nothing, Lord God, that you didn't want happen happened and nothing that you didn't want undone was left undone. Father, so we just honor you tonight. We ask, Lord God, that as we continue, Lord God, that you continue to bless us and uplift us and use us, Lord God, for your glory and for your glory alone. We just honor you and praise you. In Jesus' name we say amen. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Reverend Peg. Again, you know what? Why don't you been listening to When Christmas Speak Talk Radio? This has been Friday Night Joy. I'm your host, Reverend Ray. I've been joined by Reverend Pat Randall. Amen. We have been talking to two young men, amen, that uh, has a, a group, an organization, a ministry, amen, called Fresh, Fully Restoring Every Son's Hope. On uh, Friday Night Joy, Re- Re- Brother Anthony Wilson was the director, Reverend Curtis Austin, the assistant director. And I'm going to get the other gentleman's name because I want to put his name out there, too. What was the Pat, Reverend Pat? James Person. James Person. Brother James Person. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. What He's I'm going to do field real coordinator. quick. Okay, what I'm going to do real real, real quick, um, Brother Anthony, you have given me an email address before. I want to go ahead and do that, and then after that, we'll go ahead and do some, some um, facelift that we have to do as far as the ministry. But let me see if I can get your email address one more time that you have given us earlier. Okay, it's fully, F-U-L-L-Y, restoring, R-E-S-T-O-R-I-N-G, every, E-V-E-R-Y, Sons, S O N S, Hope, H O P E, 2013, at yahoo.com. Amen. So there you have it, amen. We're going to post that information. Please get in contact with this young man if you want to support. What up? Keep them in prayer. Keep this of uh, the fresh, fully restoring every son's hope um, in prayer. Amen. So we're going to do some praise mm-hmm. God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Pat. Thank you. <laughs> I give it to you. Thank you, Reverend Anthony. I'm my best to go ahead and say it. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend God Curtis, man. God bless you. <laughs> and thanks again for those are signing in. And we will see you um, uh, make, we see you guys, see you everyone next week. Amen. God bless you. God bless Amen. you. And God bless God you. Bless. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We invite you to join us every Thursday at 7 p.m. for His Abounding Grace with Minister Vanessa Williams. On Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries of Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Reverend Pat Randall for declaring the finished work. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday night at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sunday at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. The first Monday of every month, Apostle Shirley Jones is here for Lifeline at 7 p.m. Every fourth Saturday of the month, Alabaster Box at 7 p.m. with Prophetess Carla Johnson. For more information, go to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com, and visit our Facebook page, When Christian Speak Talk Radio, and like us. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio on Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, Speaker.com, and Live 365 with 24-7 Gospel Music. All of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646 478 
646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646-478-0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests, doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Amen. Again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to When Christians Speak Talk Radio. I've been your host, Reverend Ray. We've been talking to uh, two young men, Brother Anthony Wilson and Reverend Curtis Austin, Austin on Fresh, Fully Restoring Every Son's Hope. I want to encourage you to, to, to pass this information, pass this, blog, this um, podcast on to other people. Let them listen to it. This has been a bl- truly a blessing. Amen. And we thank God for the word that has came forth. I want to encourage you to be encouraged. Know that, encouraged. And <laughs> know that God loves you. Amen. This is Doc Pierce. With everyone. my heart, I believe in true righteousness. And now I'm so glad he Time after time